Hi everybody and welcome back to another Legends of Runeterra video. Today we were just barely revealed the Shavana um, card and followers here. It was kind of to be expected though. We saw the Demacia cards yesterday, fully expected to see Shavana today. So here we go. Um, she's going. She's the last champion of this expansion, so we could probably see a few more cards tomorrow. And I really hope that we do. I really want to see more cards from Noxus, if I'm being honest. We really haven't got a lot from Noxus. We got the Landmark and one other card this, um, this expansion. So I'm really hoping we get a couple more cards to to play around with um, with Noxus and you know We'd be kind of excited to see that. All right, so Shivana here. Shivana is a four cost Dragon and I had kind of maintained from the beginning that she was going to be a three cost dragon And I'm a little bit disappointed that she's not um, I wanted to get a dragon card that would be able to you know have board presence before turn four um, yeah, and some people might say, well, we've got Herald of the Dragons, which, or Herald of Dragons, whatever her name is, to get kind of our dragons out earlier. If Shivana had been a three-cost unit, that wouldn't have affected her ability to get out onto the board earlier at all. Because you would have to play the Herald of the Dragon on turn two, um, and then you would still have to play Shivana on turn three, even though she was a turn three, or, you know, a three mana card. Um, once the Herald of the Dragon is down, she would have only been two, right? But you could still only play her at the earliest on turn three. I think it would have given dragons a little bit of a better earlier curve, because as it is, the dragons are really dependent on, on I guess, um, being able to get them out late game, right? These dragons are really kind of mana heavy, so if you don't draw Herald of the Dragons, then you're not going to be able to get them out earlier. And then you're potentially going to be taking more damage from aggro decks before you can develop your cards and your units, which is kind of a big problem, right? So if Shivana had been three mana, that wouldn't have affected her ability to be played earlier with Herald of Dragons, and we would have had an earlier card in case we didn't draw Herald of Dragons to be able to play on turn three. So I was really hoping. Um, didn't happen. She's a four drop. So yeah, the earliest we can play her is turn three if we have Herald of Dragons, and no one is really including her in the deck. If they end up changing her and I kind of thought they would end up buffing her before releasing Shivana um, to at least a 1-2 unit. It's just so easy to take her out and um, and Bilgewater is a super huge threat at the moment. The meta will most definitely be changing but Bilgewater is just a really powerful region and Make It Rain is just a really prevalent card right now in the meta so it's almost you know it's stupid to include um, Herald of Dragons in the deck. And we really need a way to get some earlier dragons out without having Herald of Dragons. So we'll see. Uh, there's a possibility that Herald of Dragons still gets buffed. But um, kind of the way it's looking, she's not going to be. And Dragons is going to be kind of a slow archetype and could be really punished by aggro decks. So anyway, um, that's all my I have to say about that. So Shivana is, um, when you attack, you give her plus one, plus one this round. And then to level her up, she needs to see Dragon Allies deal 12 or more damage. So in order to play Shivana, you basically need to include her in a Dragon deck. So let's talk about um, her ability first. So attack, give me plus one, plus one this round. So this really kind of locks her into a kind of rally style of deck. This also protects her a little bit too. So basically, um, half the time she's going to be a 4-5, and the other half the time she's a 3-4. Um, it gives her extra stats to play around with. It can also potentially heal her um, each round if, or each each time you attack, I should say, if no one blocks into her. And then it also gives her a like the ability once she levels up to use Fury and gives her kind of a buffer so that she kind of remain or kind of is able to get more and more stats. Um, with the fury aspect of it. Uh, it's a pretty generic ability. Kind of vanilla is not very interesting to me. And yeah, you are almost forced to put her in a deck where she's allowed to um, attack over and over again. Um, yeah, to see her level up, you need to have seen dragon allies deal 12 plus damage. So this is to, you know, to the enemies. This is to the nexus. This looks like it will work with, with this uh, strafing strike coming up, with, with concerted strike, with... Uh, Single combat, whirling uh, death, right? The one from Noxus. Anything that allows our dragons to strike an an enemy should be um, should work towards this level up condition. Um, there's an innate problem, not really a problem, but a an issue I have with these types of champions. They have to be very selective 
in the decks that they can run in. So we we saw like the the other two champions in this expansion, right? Were Tom Kinch and and Soraka. And both of those have just so many different decks that you can run them in and have a potential to just work in a variety of ways and kind of fun deck building options and theory crafting. Whereas Shivana is very, very stale in comparison, at least in my opinion. She's boring. You have to put her in kind of a mid-range Demacia deck with dragons. There's not a ton of dragons to choose from. Um, you have to have, you know, you have to meet her level up condition if you want to make the most use of her. And so you do have to include dragons in the deck of some sort or these dragon type arc archetype cards um, I just don't find that to be very entertaining very fun or very interest <clears throat> uh, sorry very interesting so that's kind of like the problem I have with Shivana. And they're kind of making her out to be like the biggest, you know, champion reveal of this expansion. She had like her own little sort of reveal trailer that the other two didn't have. And I don't know, I just feel like she's kind of flat. Almost like Seraphine is <laughs> that was recently revealed for uh, League of Legends, kind of like a Sona-like champion where is there's not a lot of variety, right? Um, looks kind of like the same, although they maintain that she kind of will be a little bit different. That's a tangent, but but I don't know. I'm just kind of disappointed in in the the direction that they took Shivana. I was expecting kind of a a super cool um dragon type character here. We don't really get that. All right, so when she levels up, um, she basically has a similar ability here she instead of getting one plus one plus one each round she gets plus two plus two and then you create a fleeting strafing strike in hand so she's creating a card that's fleeting just keep in mind that's sort of like discard fodder potential so a discard deck anything that creates a fleeting card in hand is kind of interesting in a a, a discard card so there's a potential like a secondary deck you can run her in but you still in order to level her up have to include dragons to begin with um, yeah, and then she's got Fury, so every time she attacks and kills a unit, she's getting plus one, plus one to her stats. Um, Alright, so she's a four drop, so she's a three four, so she would need to attack on her own, is it three times, because she'll be a four, a five each time she attacks, right? So just, just kind of as a baseline, if you don't have any other dragons in the deck, she would need to attack or strike four different times to enemies or to the nexus in order to level up. All right, so besides that, then we have dragons that can come out on later rounds, so five, six, so there's a potential really to put maybe two to three more dragons on the next couple of rounds, and um, then she'll level up for, I would say, on average, three rounds after you put her down. Um, yeah, so, well, maybe two, two, because it looks like the the defending um, will also play into this level up condition, right? So also blocking into enemies, so it's still damaging them. So I would say two rounds, it depends on how fast you can get dragons down and if you can protect her. So two to three rounds actually is probably a pretty safe bet. So by turn seven, she should be leveled up and into her dragon form, Shivana, um, card. All right, um, let's move on to this next card. I think I've talked a little bit too much about Shivana. Not super excited, and then I'll kind of leave it at that. All right, Shivana's Confront. So this is a cr Confront. Should be a main deckable spell here. Burst speed, three cost of the spell. You grant an ally challenger and shuffle a Shivana. Okay, yeah. so we're just granting an ally challenger. This is a permanent, um, I guess, uh, keyword. And this is interesting because I don't think we've got a permanent challenger unless i'm wrong there may be a unit that grants it like a laurent character but i think that's only temporary i think it's only for the round so i think this is the first card that actually grants challenger to a unit that they're going to keep which is pretty cool because there's a couple of cards that we can combine this with like garen for example um cards that have regeneration um, are pretty good targets for this sort of thing that can clear out units. Also, anything that g is granting barrier, right? That would be really good. So potentially in Shin decks where you're you're granting barrier to a unit and then using Challenger to take out other units. Um, the Fleet Feather Tracker is kind of the unit that is used early game in Demacia for this sort of um, ability, but now it's possible to kind of give it to something else if we have this in the deck. Um, yeah, and just kind of take out units with a bulkier unit ourselves that's able to protect itself with higher uh, life than the Fleet Feather Tracker is. Now we are kind of, we are trading if we do, like, you know, if we trade out the Fleet Feather Tracker for, for Confront, then we are trading a unit, a cheap early game unit for this card, but I mean, it's just something to think about. Uh, dragons in general are coming out later, so maybe you know this is a good. This really is a good card for dragons, where we can give 
give our bigger dragons a, an ability to, to target other units and then also use their fury to to power themselves up. So I don't actually mind this card, it's pretty good. I think it's got a lot of different uses in decks besides dragons and also um, with different region combinations, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, so I don't mind this card at all. I kind of like it. All right, let's look at Strafing Strike. So this is a card that Shivana is creating a fleeting um, copy of each time or when she levels up in each round. Nope, never mind. This is just when you attack. So it's on the attack phase. You have to be attacking. You have to have declared your attack. You create the strafing strike. So this is interesting because then the unit, the the enemy actually doesn't need to block, and then you don't get value out of strafing strike on the on the combat phase. So keep that in mind. Um, it's a fast speed spell though, so it looks like you still interact afterwards, but kind of an interesting uh, card here. All right, fast speed, three cost spell, an ally, and an enemy strike each other. So this is pretty similar to single combat. Now the caveat here is, and why it is also one extra mana, is that if the ally is a dragon, heal it too, right? So I don't know if you're going to be including this into your deck if you have a Shivana. Um, she's creating one each round she attacks, right, once she's leveled up. So I don't know that this is a really necessary to, to main deck. Uh, just because it is three mana, you do get use out of single combat still early game. Um, I don't know. It, if it is used, and it will almost singular, like it will have to be used in dragon decks because there's no point in including this over a single combat, right? Um, other than you, if you're a dragon, you heal it too. So this isn't going to be used outside of dragon decks. I'll say that right now. Um, I don't really see a point. Why would you have an expensive, an extra expensive single combat unless you just want to create more cards in your deck that allow you to strike something, right? So maybe a one-off at the most, just as an extra single combat card. Um, yeah, but in dragon decks, I think it works out okay. You heal it too as well. So with the fury, all these dragons have fury. They're going to be gaining basically on killing a unit. Um, they're going to heal it plus three basically. If they kill the unit, the condition's met, um, they survive and they heal too. All right, um, let's go on to this next card here. Dragon, nine cost from Demacia. Kadragrin, 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 the Infernal. Is this the Infernal Drake? All right, Fury, of course. When I'm summoned, grant other dragon allies everywhere, plus two, plus two. Uh, I don't really know how impactful this is going to be because this is a nine drop, right? You're gonna have to play this like fairly late so the infinite mind splitter is an eight cost dragon um, card as well and that's kind of hard to get out so this is even more expensive than the infinite mind splitter and we're granting our allies so we need more dragons down to actually get full value out of this and it's the end of the game so is it actually worth it to include this in the deck just to give our dragons plus two plus two are we going to win by that point or not um, yeah, we need to have other win conditions and options, I think. If we want this to actually be a viable card, things that grant our units overwhelm, that sort of thing. Um, because at the end of the game, the stats don't matter as much. Everybody should know this by now. Stats don't matter too much by the end of the game. You need to be finishing off with a with a legitimate win condition with elusive units, overwhelm, direct nexus damage, that sort of thing. So. Um, we'll see how it works. I kind of doubt it's going to make it as a staple into dragon decks. It just seems super expensive and there's other cards that you are going to be able to include that are probably better than this one for what you want to do, right? All right, let's go down here. The seven cost of dragon. This is a Targon card. This is called Eclipse Dragon. It's Fury, of course, and we have a Daybreak and a Nightfall ability. So this is more Daybreak and Nightfall synergy, which is interesting. All right, so Daybreak. The next dragon or celestial unit you play costs two less. Nightfall, create a random dragon uh, follower and celestial follower in hand. All right, so say you have Raven down, right? And it's permanent daybreak, and I believe you still get the nightfall abilities too, even if Raven's out. Correct me if I'm wrong, I think that's right. So I think you can actually, technically, if Raven's down, activate both of these car uh, abilities at once, right? So we can create dragon followers, and we can create, um, and we can reduce their cost as well, which is a pretty cool mechanic. Um, I actually kind of like this card, and I like that they're including more daybreak and nightfall units, um, just creating a little bit more 
uh, variability in the way we can play those two archetypes. They're really stale too. Um, Nightfall and Daybreak, don't even get me started on that. I think they're super boring. So um, the dragon concept is a little more interesting to me than those two. And um, I guess this is cool that this is a dragon, Daybreak, and Nightfall. Just adding a little bit more different ways to play the game. So actually this card looks pretty cool. Now, is it going to be included into decks? I don't know. Again, in, in Nightfall decks, that they tend to be more aggro style decks, right? Where we can, um, I don't know, with like Nocturne and Diana, we're looking to, to, to be pretty aggressive and be able to finish the game with like fearsome units from Shadow Isles or, or elusive damage, right? And typically, we don't really have a whole lot of late game units in that game. And if we do, it's something like um, Cygnus, right? Who's granting an elusive or elusive to a heavy hitting unit? Um, so Eclipse Dragon is a seven cost. Are we going to be able to get it out to where it's going to be able to make sense in a Nightfall and Daybreak deck? I don't know. Probably not. I think it makes more sense in a Daybreak deck than it does in Nightfall for sure, though. All right. Um, let's go on to the six cost Demacia spell. When I'm some or oh, sorry, Dragon Guard Lookout. When I'm summoned, if you behold a dragon, you rally. All right. So this is a pretty cool card. Um, there's some interesting aspects to this card too. So, of course, we're looking at Shivana. She get, she is given a plus one plus one each time she attacks. I don't think that we're we're limited to attack to gaining that those stats for um, only one attack per round, right? I think we get them each time we attack. They might have to clarify that, but as far as I can tell, and because this is kind of a rally card with dragon keyword attached to it, I assume that the that every time you attack with Shivana each round, plus rallies, you're going to get plus one, plus one, right? That's what I assume. Um, yeah, and if you're running in this in a, in a dragon deck, you're going to be able to get the behold off pretty much every time you play this, which is a pretty strong effect. Her stat line isn't super strong for a six cost card. She's three five, but we're allowing all of our units to attack again, which is pretty cool. Typically, I think with this sort of card, you're going to open up with an attack and then play the card and then attack again, um, which is a pretty strong effect, especially with these dragons where they potentially are getting even more attack and help each time they kill a unit and attack. It's going to be really hard for the enemy to be able to withstand multiple attacks per round with these sorts of units. Um, now, some some issues that we do have with Dragon Guard Lookout is that it is a six cost unit, right? And what other six cost units do we have from Demacia and in particular Demacia midrange decks which run these six cost units? We've got Genevieve Elmhart and we have um, Cythria the Bold. Both of those are six cost cards and do they do their job better than the Dragon Guard Lookout does? So Cythria the Bold is granting your units extra stats and fearsome. Um, the same thing really with, with Genevieve Elmhart, we're granting, I think it's plus two, plus two to all of our units, and she's scouts, so she has the option and challenger to pick off a unit, right? And then have your units attack afterward. So is this card better than those? And I don't know that she is, to be honest, and she definitely has worse stats. The Dragon Guard Lookout has has awful stats really compared to the other two cards. So the effect is pretty powerful, but is it better than the other two? I don't think it is. So I don't think this card is going to see play over Genevieve or over C3 of the Bold, to be honest. Um, yeah, that's just my opinion. Uh, we'll have to see how it works once we start building decks around these cards, but I just don't I just don't see it being as powerful. I think they're going to have to buff it. They eventually did that with Genevieve Elmhart, because Cythria was just being used over her, right? Um, so they may end up buffing the Dragon Guard Lookout. Rally effects are pretty strong, but... but um, I don't know, they're kind of situational as well, because yeah, the earliest we can play this is on turn 6, we attack. We're limited in what kind of combat tricks we can play, because we need to reserve enough mana to be able to play the Dragon Guard Lookout. That's another thing to take into account on turn 6, whereas Scythria can come down on turn 6 before you attack, and then the enemy has to kind of deal with her, or take the, or take the hit from your fearsome units and extra stats. So, um, yeah, kind of an interesting, an interesting card but we'll see if it gets a lot of play over those two i guess one other thing to say in its favor is that you can put this on your defending turn and then turn it to a rally that's one more thing you can say in favor of this card so that can put a lot of pressure on your opponent that the other two cards from demacia can do 
I'm a little disappointed that this is included in this in this region though, because we do have a lot of six droppers cards from Demacia. All right. Um, yeah, that's about it. So overall, I'm not super excited about Siobhan. I'm much more excited about Tom Kinch and Soraka and building decks around them. I'll definitely try out the Dragon Archetype. I've done it in the past. I really like using Mobilize with Dragons and reducing their cost even more, so I'll probably try that. Where Siobhan is creating uh, spells in hand as well. With the Mobilize decks, I typically... I typically don't um, include a lot of spells in hand because we want to get good value out of Mobilize. Um, it's cool that Shivana creates Strafing Strike in hand, a spell that we can use our spell mana with, um, you know, if we end up doing a Mobilize deck. So that's pretty cool. All right, that's about it for this video. If you liked it, don't forget to um, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you tomorrow. Thanks.